Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today we're going to be discussing the automation of a process uh, to create HDPE pellets. HDPE pellets are something that are used in multiple different components in the game, uh, but primarily some of the higher level mulch that will increase the rate of the growth of crops, specifically saplings inside of hoppers and bonsai hoppers. Uh, it's a very important component that you're probably going to need at one point, but it can be a little challenging to make. Um, so this is going to be a update to that. I've made a tutorial of this nature previously. This is a newer design that is more improved and it fixes any of the clogging issues or backing up issues that some people might have found in my original. Um, now, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button so that way you can see all my videos, tutorials, and streams as they come out. All right. So, you need a bunch of different components for this one. Uh, we're going to start with a dense, infinite water source. We're going to need one of those. Now, dense, infinite water source is com putting uh, eight compact, infinite water sources together surrounding a block of gold. Now, just to kind of give you a little idea there, um, to make a compact infinite water source is a bunch of basic infinite water sources around bronze. An infinite water source is four basic plating, two tin ingots and two buckets of water. So you need eight of these to make one uh, basic comp, uh, the uh, compact infinite water source and eight of the compact to make one dense. Um, this process, uh, especially once we pump it up, is going to use a lot of water. I find this to be the best way to do that. Uh, but any infinite water source should work. Next, we're going to need an electrolytic separator. Okay. We're going to use one of those. We need four iron ingots two redstone, two enriched alloy, and an electrolytic core. Next, we're going to use pressurized reaction chambers, and we're going to need two of those, and that is two steel ingots, enriched alloy, two basic control circuits, an enrichment chamber, a dynamic tank, and two basic gas tanks. Next, we're going to need a crusher. Uh, that's going to be four redstone, two buckets of lava, two basic control circuits, and a steel casing. We're going to need two rotary condensentrators. That's going to be four pieces of glass, two basic control circuits, an energy tablet, basic gas tank, and basic fluid tank. Uh, we're going to use a black hole unit. Uh, that's going to be three plastic, two eye of ender and an ender pearl, two chests, and a machine case. And then we're going to use two black hole tanks. It's almost the same recipe. It's the three plastic, two eye of ender, ender pearl, the same machine case. You're going to use two buckets instead of chests. Okay. Outside of that, we're also going to be using several different basic of uh, the cyclic cables, energy cables, extraction cables, and such. We're going to use basic pressurized tubes. We're also going to use a bunch of speed upgrades and energy upgrades from mechanism. Speed upgrades are going to be uh, two glass, two enriched alloy, and some osmium dust. And the uh, energy ones, almost the same glass, two enriched alloys, but with gold dust. Okay? The last component we're going to need is a power source. Now, this system uses a lot of power. Um, so I recommend using something pretty strong. Um, I use very often um, uh, upgraded geothermal generators on an infinite lava loop. It's one of my favorite power sources to use. I will link a tutorial to how to do that down in the bottom of the stream. This system needs at least three of them to pull. Um, so a reactor or something higher based is probably going to be needed if you want it to have enough power. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to use just a creative energy battery, uh, which provides a limited power, but any power source will work. The more power, the faster this is going to run for you. Okay, so we're going to start off by grabbing our basic machines. Now I'm going to show you how to put each one of these together. This tutorial will be a little bit longer than normal, uh, mostly because uh, there's a lot of steps to it, and I'm going to walk you through all of them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to drop down is we're going to drop down our electric electrolytic separator. Okay, I'm going to drop that guy right here. Next, we're going to use a pressurized reaction chamber. Now that 
It's going to go next to it, but facing the opposite direction. That's important. The electrolytic separator um, takes one product that it makes and puts it out the left side. The other one goes out the right side, and there isn't a way of changing that. So we need the stuff that's going to go out this side. Okay. Then we're going to use our dense water source. Okay. Slap that here. See, it needs the water in the PRC, the pressurized reaction chamber, but it's also going to need the, the water in this one. So we're going to go ahead and connect this. So it has water as well. So both of those blocks need to be connected to your uh, dense infinite water source, water source of your choice, okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and get power to this, and we're going to connect power as we're doing this so you can see each system as we're doing it. Now, for power, I'm actually going to put that down underneath. It's going to be the easiest way to do it. See the underneath of my ugly little area here. But I'm going to go ahead and put a battery here, okay? Um, you, again, could just run your cables from whatever power source you're using, okay? So these are the first two machines. I'm going to go ahead and run this out of here. Oop, I did not grab any energy cables. Let me grab those real quick. Oop. Those. Put it away now. That for a minute. And we're going to go ahead and run power to... Oh, wrong one. Wow. I haven't done a tutorial in a while. Bear with me. <laughs> All right. So those machines have power. Let's look at how those are working, okay? So the electrolytic separator takes water and turns it into two different fluids. The first one's already going over here, and that's hydrogen. And the second one creates oxygen. I guess it's gas, it's not, not a fluid. Um, so we're getting those already now. Go ahead and I'm gonna plug up these holes because we're not gonna need those for a little bit. Now we're gonna use basic pressurized tubes on this side to pull the oxygen out. We're going to need that oxygen later on in this process. Now, to avoid anything clogging up in here, you want to change both of these little sections here from idle to dumping excess. What that means, if the tank gets full for some reason, it'll just void whatever's left over. It'll keep making it. So if this side's being used faster than this side, you don't have to worry about the whole machine stopping because this one gets full. So dumping excess will allow it to still keep filling the tanks up. As you can see, we're getting oxygen coming up in here. And from this side, all the hydrogen is going into here. Okay? So the next thing that we're going to have to put down is going to be our, um, here, rotary condensentrator. We're going to set that right here. Okay? Now the rotary condensentrator going to have here. We're going to leave a space for that. Okay. A couple of these away for a minute. I do that anymore. We're going to go ahead and grab our black hole tank. Set a black hole tank over two spots. Okay. We're leaving a space for a cable in each one. Make sense? Okay. Then we're going to take another pressurized reaction chamber. We're going to leave a space, but this one will be facing sideways. We want the front of that to be facing our black hole tank. So this is the basic line of machines that we have running, right? Now the next and last machine is going to be our crusher, and we're going to set that right in front of this pressurized reaction chamber, facing this way, facing towards that PRC, because this is going to automatically eject what it makes into here, okay? So next thing, as we're laying these machines out, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set ourselves another rotary condensentrator here behind that last pressurized reaction chamber. Uh, and if I remember correctly, yes, it's going to be facing this direction. <laughs> you may have to flip that in case I've forgotten wrong, but it should be coming this direction. And then we're going to take another black hole tank. And we're going to set it at the very end. This is our basic process. There's only a couple more things we're going to add. We're going to go ahead and grab some item extraction cables. On top of our pressurized reaction chamber, the thing that's kind of right smack in the middle of these machines, we're going to put an item extraction cable coming up. Let's bump that up to 64. Okay. And then we're going to put away the tank, and we're going to grab the black hole unit. We're going to put a black hole unit on top of that. The purpose of the black hole tanks and units um, are some of these processes will produce materials, gases, or fluids faster than other machines can use them. That's where the clogging up or the blockage in the system, the original design used to happen. This will fix that because the black hole tank holds a horrendous amount of material. And worst case scenario, if you run your world for a few hundred hours, 
you may have to take a tank out and put another empty one back in. But the time it takes to fill a tank or to fill a black hole unit with this process, nearly going to be very hard to do. Okay? Not impossible, of course, but the worst case scenario, you may on a rarest, very rare occasions have to remove your tanks and put fresh ones in. But you'll also have the extra gas or fluid in the tanks that you're using. So now we're going to hook some of this stuff up. The last thing we're going to need is we're going to, the crusher is going to be, um, that's what's going to make one of the basic components of HTPE. It's going to need something feeding into it. Let's just go grab a chest here real quick. We're going to set that here because there's different options you can use. We're going to talk about those when we get there. But let's go ahead and connect all of these. So the first thing we're going to do is put an item extraction cable here. This is going to take whatever material we use to pressure into the crusher. Now we're going to go into the crusher. We're going to click on our side configuration. We're in the items menu, we're going to click auto eject on. Outputs to the right. Right. We want energy coming in the bottom. And then from the left hand side is going to be our input. We'll accept it. Sure. Okay. So now we're going to go underneath our system. And now we have to power all the things that we just put in there. Right. We know that machine's here. And over to going to be this one. I'm just going to put a hole in there for now, and that's fine, so you can see the process. And we have our tank, and we have another machine, right? So we need to get power to that. Go over two more. The machine. And the last thing, of course, as we know, is a tank, and that's not going to need any power. Right? So our crusher's got power. All of our machines should now have power to them. Now that they do, you can see that this item extraction cable is connecting to the crusher. Again, the crusher auto eject needs to be on so we can put its product into the pressurized reaction chamber. Let's see what that product is. Let's go ahead and grab HDPE. HDPE pellets, which is what we're making here, need substrate. To get substrate, you need biofuel. That's what the crusher is for. Biofuel can be made from a multitude of different things, mostly all the saplings, can also be used from potatoes, seeds, uh, beetroot, any of those things. So this is going to be my recommendation to you. I've found uh, that you can put a sapling here and just filter just saplings in if you put a hopping bonsai on a chest or something of that nature. But sometimes, you know, uh, the actual saplings don't drop every time. That can be a bit slower. You have a whole bunch of saplings dropping into the system if you want. We want a lot of stuff, so I would recommend making a farm. It doesn't have to be a huge farm, uh, but you're going to want at least 12 to 14 plants. And I would use either beetroots or potatoes. And you could have, if you wanted a farm right here leading right into this, or you could have a farm connected with cables to bring the potatoes over here, if you would, or to bring um, your beetroots, whatever you use. But potatoes and beetroots, I find to be good if you use a bunch of sprinklers. Your crops are going to grow fast enough to keep this system up and going. Okay, and if that's the case, you may want to replace this chest with another one of our black hole units, right? Because if you got if it's producing a ton of potatoes, you don't want this to clog up your farm system either. So you can use a black hole unit here if you have a farm bringing in a lot of a lot of products. Okay. So now that we've got that set up, we're going to put some potatoes in there in just a minute. Once we get the process started, we're going to go back over here to these basic pressurized tubes that we started with very early on. I said we're going to need that oxygen for something later, and we are. We're going to take that oxygen, and we're going to feed it all the way down to the last pressurized reaction chamber, because one of the components that this is going to need is oxygen. We've already got it making. We don't need a second machine to do that. So now the oxygen is flowing into the pressurized reaction chamber here at the end. Again, that's important. Okay? So this, let's go ahead and... Uh, that this is going to put our potatoes into our crusher. That's going to go into here. Now, our PRC has both of the, what it needs. It has water and it has hydrogen. What it needs is that biofuel, right? Let's go ahead and go into this. We'll get done with power for a minute. Um, those, and let's grab ourselves just a couple potatoes <laughs> to get our process going. Let's go ahead and grab a couple stacks of potatoes. Throw those in here. And now it's being pulled out. Crusher is chewing them up, and all goes as well. It should put it in here. Now, if it doesn't, that's okay. We need to go into our PRC. We're going to go into it and put auto eject on, right? Now, in this situation, the middle one is our front. We want that to be input. 
That's how it's going to pull in the biofuel, right? And then the top space, we want to be, instead of output, well, we, output there is fine. Uh, but for items, we want output up top. Let's change that. Because we want those substrates to go up here into our black hole unit, which now you can see it is, right? So this one is push, crushing up our potatoes into biofuel. It's pushing it into the PRC. PRC is making... Um, the substrate and pushing it up here. What also it's making is this, ethylene, which is the other component we need. This PRC is producing two different materials we need for this setup. So let's start with up here. What we're going to do is we're going to put an item extraction cable, crank that up to 64, grab ourselves our item cables again. We haven't used those yet. And we're going to take these and we're going to connect them to the top of that pressurized reaction chamber that has the oxygen going into it, right? As you can see, it's now getting the substrate. Now it's getting oxygen and substrate. That's two of the components it needs to make the actual HDPE pellets. Let's get it the third. And that's where this is going to come in. Rotary condensator. So we're going to take a pressurized tube, put that in there. Now that should, in theory, move our ethylene that this is making over into the other one. Now, we're going to have to make sure it does that. We're going to go into our side configuration. We're going to go to uh, gases. We're going to put auto eject on. Output's already set to the right. Now you can see it's in there, and it's coming into the rotary condensator. So what a rotary condensator does is it turns a gas into a fluid. So that ethylene is being turned into liquid ethylene. We need it in that format. So this system here, making our biofuel, going in here, this is now producing, I've run out of potatoes are going so, but it's making our substrate, which goes all the way over here. And depending on the speed of your system, your substrate may make fast, make, make very fast. That's why I like to use a black hole unit here, so it'll hold any overflow. Again, we want to avoid any clogs. Now that this is turning our ethylene into liquid ethylene, we're going to move that liquid ethylene into this black hole tank. We're going to do that with a fluid extraction cable. Now it's a fluid, not a gas anymore. Put that there. Now I don't have to make any more changes to any of the configuration. As you can see, our black hole tank has already gone pink at this point, which means it's getting the fluid. You see our ethylene is filling up. And now we need to get that fluid into our pressurized reaction chamber with another fluid cable. Okay? Now we're going to go back into here. Right? Because you see the tank is not connecting, or the hose is not connecting here. We're going to go into our side configuration. We're going to choose fluids. We're going to put input or fluid in the middle. Auto eject, can't eject, doesn't matter. And now it's connecting. So as you can see, now it's got our substrate, it's got our liquid ethylene, and it's got our oxygen. And it is making HDPE pellets. Now, you're going to need a place for those to go, and that's the one thing I haven't put in here yet. I'm going to go ahead and slap down an item extraction cable on the side. Um, regardless of which one you would like to use, you could have it feeding into a chest. You could have it feeding directly into your storage system of whichever system you're using. Uh, all of that is fine. For right now, just so that we don't have any clogs, I'm going to put down one more black hole unit, which is also acceptable. And now our HDPE pellets are automated. Now coming into here automatically. So we have automated that process, but there's still one more thing we have to look at. Okay, this All of this now is making our HDP pellets. But in this last pressurized reaction chamber, one of the issues we're going to run into is it also, even though it's using oxygen, it creates oxygen as a byproduct as well. So you're getting oxygen back out of it. And this little tank, this little spot here on the side, will eventually fill up. And if it does, the whole system will stop. Because this PRC does not have the option to void excess like our rotary condensator did at the beginning. That's why we have these over here. You're going to go ahead and we're going to attach a fluid. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wrong one. We're going to actually add a... <laughs> we're going to add this guy again. Pressurized reaction tube. Because we need the gas that is the oxygen to come out of there. We're going to go into a pressurized reaction chamber. We're going to go into the side config. This time we're going to choose gases. And on the back, which is the bottom left, we're going to put output, oops, output, and auto eject on. Okay, now the blue is going in there. The oxygen's coming out that's left over. That's the oxygen in this one. Then we're going to go into our rotary condensator. 
and we need to get this all connected as well. So let's see what we can do here. So we've got it facing a direction. You can click the T button to switch the process. So going from gas to fluid, fluid to gas. In this situation, we need going from gas to fluid. Okay? We need this to connect with this machine here. Remember, just like we did over here. Let's take a look at that. Okay? Upgrades going there. Now, I may have this backwards. We talked about that earlier, and I am known to do that. Let's see. Uh, okay, let's pop that out of there. Of course, that's the one I put back. <laughs> let's go over here and get rid of these for a bit. Grab our rotary condensator. There we go. I had it backwards. We actually want it facing this way. I apologize for the beginning. So we actually want to have it facing this way. And now what that's doing is I'm it's taking that oxygen and it's converting it into liquid oxygen. The reason we do that is there's really no infinite gas tank. Um, so eventually, if we put this coming out as gas and put it into a gas tank, that tank would fill much quicker. But in this situation, now we can go ahead and take a fluid cable, slap it on the side here, and we've turned that oxygen into liquid oxygen, which is going to go then into this black hole tank, which, as we've discussed, a black hole tank takes forever to fill up. So in a very rare situation, you may have to occasionally swap out the black hole tanks. But it will take a very long time to do that, especially considering this makes a very small amount of... Oh, sorry, this makes a very small amount of oxygen. It uses most of it. All right. So we've got everything set up. At this point, the system is going. And this is an all you need to run it automatically. We are going to do one or two little last things here, though, just to kind of give some uh, suggestions. If you'd like to increase the speed of this process, that's where the speed upgrades and energy upgrades that we talked about at the very beginning are going to come into play. Okay, Go ahead and throw some more potatoes in there. So we've got taters. We're going to start by grabbing our energy. As I mentioned, this whole system uses a lot of power. So using energy upgrades on any of the machines that will take them, hypothetically, uh, it'll go in your electrolytic separator. It'll hold up to eight. Put eight in there. You can put eight in your um, crusher. You can put it in your pressurized reaction chambers. Put it in your rotary condensators. Almost every machine is going to use these. Button. Eight of those. And we'll put it down in this last one as well. This is going to make each one of those machines use less power for the process that they're doing. That's going to be very helpful. Now that we've got all the power set up, we're going to grab our speed. Now we're going to use speed the same way. And I recommend putting the power in first because the speed, since we're going to speed it up, is going to make it use power even faster. So those power upgrades we put in are going to help offset the speed upgrades that we're now going to add. And they add the exact same way. They'll hold up to eight in the same slot. And as you put these in, it will drastically increase the speed of the production of each one of these machines. Now, in my previous tutorial that talks about doing this, I avoided using these because it added to the clogging problem. But now that we're using the black hole tanks and black hole units, that eliminates that process, more or less. I said, it'll be a long, long time before you have to worry about a black hole tank filling up. Uh, this process here, especially once you get your potatoes going, you get your products going very fast, this will produce, a lot of times, you're going to get your uh, ethylene faster than this PRC is going to use it. So this black hole tank here is very important. It's probably the main one out of everything. You need this one here, so that way it, this using less ethylene than this is producing, it won't log up in the middle. And then, like I said, at this point, everything is automated. This last black hole unit that's getting our HTP pellets, we're already at 99 of them. That can be replaced with going directly into your system, or you can use a black hole unit if you'd like. <clears throat> you just need to have a constant supply of materials coming into this machine, your crusher. Again, potatoes, beetroots, uh, regular seeds, any saplings. You can manually throw a ton of stuff into a chest if you want. 
If you want to fully automate it, again, I recommend just a basic farm with a few sprinklers, making yourself a bunch of potatoes or beetroots. Uh, they grow very quickly, and in my experience, they grow faster than the crusher uses them. If you have enough, you find you don't have enough potatoes, increase the size of your farm a little bit until you get to that point that your potatoes or your item you're using is producing faster than the crusher is using them. And then at that point, you can step back and your HDPE pellets are gonna be 100% automated. Um, in my last tutorial, I had a lot of this stuff already sitting down and I just showed how it worked. Uh, a lot of people asked to see the actual connections and such. But this time I wanted to go through and actually show you how to use the GUIs inside the system or the, uh, these little McFlickies right here, the side configuration, so you know exactly which one needs to be on. And as you can see, the system is working perfectly fine. Um, this is getting enough water. Again, it's showing low power here, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's still working perfectly fine. If you look at our PRC, it's staying maxed. Uh, that's just kind of at the PRC. Because it's cycling so fast, sometimes it looks like it's empty. It is more than meeting the needs of the PRC. These two things are staying right up at top down. Let me go over here and look at this PRC. Same thing. Our oxygen's there. Ethylene's there. They're staying right at the topped off part. Nothing is, it's not waiting on materials in any way. Okay. All right. So that is the automation of fresh, uh, sorry, HDPE pellets version 2.0. Uh, this eliminates a lot of the clogging issues and blockage that we saw in the first design. Uh, and I think you're going to find this one pretty helpful. Again, key reminders, uh, it's going to take a lot of power, even with the power upgrades in there. So make sure you have a sufficient amount of power running into the system, especially if you're going to crank up the speed like I did at the end. Uh, it's going to need, like I said, I run three fully mo uh, upgraded geothermal, upgraded geothermal uh, generators in order to run this. And, and it meets the needs as long as you've got all four stacks of 64 uh, speed modifiers inside of each one. All right. Well, cool. Um, first tutorial done in a little while. I appreciate everybody who uh, made requests and suggestions for this. Um, if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please be sure to put those down in the comments. And I will do my best to get back with you as quickly as I can, um, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you may have for other tutorials you'd like to see. Throw those down in there. I'm very happy to you know, try to put something together if I can. Uh, you can also go to my website, onlydraven.com. Bottom of the homepage is a place you can submit an email if you have, again, questions or uh, suggestions for tutorials. Throw those at me. I'd love to get them. Uh, you can also join me on any of my live streams. I stream on both YouTube and Twitch. On YouTube, obviously, you're here right now. I stream several times a week, and I also stream on my Twitch channel, Only Draven Gaming. Feel free to pop in and ask questions, especially if I'm playing Minecraft, and maybe we can work out your questions. I can show you this stuff in real time. Uh, we'd love to have you give us a follow on both of those. All right. Well, that is going to do me for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.